All right, scale of the day. Today I have a Purdue theme going. In fact, let me add... Uh, Okay, so this is the C major scale pattern five of five in the G chord pattern. What does that mean? It means we could play a G chord way up here. That's a C chord in the G form. Alright, so that's why they call it the G form, because here's the G open chord, right? And then barred and slid up put the roots on the C's. All right, so here we go. It's uh, the pattern is running between the fifth and eighth fret other than one extension on your G string, your third string, back to the B note at the fourth fret. Otherwise, it's all in between the, the uh, fifth and eighth fret, okay? So C, D, E, F, G, A, shift, B, C, D, shift, E, F, G, A, B, C. You're getting two full octaves here of the C major scale, which is nice. And uh, so let's look at, take a minute and absorb the symmetries of the pattern. Okay, so when you start out, you're a 1, 3, 4 on the A, B, C. Then you're a 1, 3, 4 fingering on the D, E, F. Then you're a 1, 3, no 4 on the G, A. Then you shift and you get a 1, 2, 4 on the B, C, D, then you shift and you get a one, two, four on the E, F, G, and then you go A, B, C with a one, three, four fingering. So what's symmetrical here? Well, um, well the bottom two, almost three strings, the three lowest strings, so a, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, all of that is really pretty symmetrical other than just not ha having the fourth note there because that would be a, a um, B flat, which isn't what you want. So there is no note on that string. But that's pretty symmetrical. And you're going to shift and change to the one, two, four. Shift. Those are both one, two, fours. All right. And then one, three, four, because the E string is going to be the same as the low E string. Okay, that's the pattern. It's um, it's not bad. It's pretty good. You know, if it didn't have that shift in there, it would be just adorable, wouldn't it? Uh, ha. So how you do those shifts is kind of up to you. I tend to um, think of them like a finger extension right here. I'm stretching back as I go to that. I'm not just moving my hand. I'm literally reaching back and stretching as I go to that. And then I do shift up. And on the way down, so it's just a matter of instead of putting your pinky down here of reaching back here and grabbing that with your pinky and the rest falls right out but I play the A G as a 4-2 pinky middle on the way down and then shift and that's pretty comfortable for me alright so let's practice this a little bit as usual, we'll go nice and slow to start. Here's, let's go just a little faster. Let's go. Let's try 76 beats per minute. 76 today. A little bit faster than we've been doing. We're going to start with our pinky on the C at the 8th fret. And we know there's a C at the 8th fret. Why? Because we do. All right. We just know it. We could count it up or down and get it, but here it is. 
okay? So we're going to go from the root down and back up to the root, double hit the root and go up to the next root, double hit the root and go up to the next root, double hit and come down, double hit at the root, come down, double hit at the root, go down and back up. Same thing we've been doing all along. This emphasizes having your ear hear this as a C-tonal center by stopping on those roots and emphasizing them, okay? And it also helps you remember where they are in the pattern, okay? So we'll do quarter notes. One, two, ready, go down. C, B, A, B, C, C, D, E, F, G, A shift, B, C, C, D, shift, E, F, G, A, B, C, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, C, B, A, B, C. How'd you do? Did you get it? Good job. All right. Let's do the same thing. I'm going to move it up to 80. And we're also going to switch to um, um, eighth notes here. But we'll try to do the same thing we just did, okay? One and two and ready, go and... Let's do eighth notes again. One and two and ready, go down. C, D, E, B, C. How'd you do? I'm gonna slow it down just a little. Slow it back down to uh, 69. And let's do triplets. Okay? One tri oops. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Okay? It's a uh, okay, so let's do triplets. One triplet, two triplet, ready triplet, go triplet. bump this up to 72 and let's do 16th notes okay we're sub working on subdividing the beat and learning this pattern okay so 16th notes four notes per hit one e and a two e and a ready and a go e and a did you get that all right, let's slow it down to 60 beats a minute, just in case we got some beginners that that was too fast for. And let's um, do the 16th notes at 60. Okay, so that's four, four notes per beat. It's one E and a two E and a ready and a go E and a. Try it again. One E and a two E and a go down and a ready go. How'd you do? Did you get it? If you didn't get it, back it up and try again. Okay? Um, fun pattern. Good stuff there. Let's just do a little more practice. I'm going to speed this up to, uh, let's say, oh, let's go like, uh, let's do uh, 120, and we'll do eighth notes. Okay? One and two, and ready, go, and... Now, the astute, 
astute listener will notice that that's exactly like we when we did 16th notes at 60 beats a minute, and that's correct because we were at 120, which is twice the number of beats per minute, but we're doing 8th notes, which is half the number of notes, so it's the same thing, okay? Um, but how you hear it and how you count it is different, all right? And that becomes important when you're playing much faster and you're doing solos and you're trying to switch and subdivide the beat differently in your solo. So you might be doing something with a rhythmic pattern that's in fours and moving to a rhythmic pattern in threes like triplets or moving from a rhythmic pattern you're thinking of in twos like eighth notes and moving to a triplet type kind of thing and then back. And being able to do that on the fly at much faster tempos um, is really an effective technique in soloing. Okay, it happens in a lot of stuff. And it sounds cool, and um, but you got to kind of be able to do it at these slower speeds, and scale practice is a good way to start to develop that rhythm and timing to do it. So that is pattern five. We've covered the five patterns, okay, of kind of the cage system or these five five scale forms. Now there's a lot we're going to build off of these from here. Um, we're going to do pentatonic forms that are right off these same roots, okay. We're also going to do Segovia scales. And we may do some other patterns as well. Uh, we're going to come back to these five patterns and do the minor scales. Okay, and then we're going to start doing this stuff in other keys as well. So um, this is all really good practice and learning this stuff all over the neck is um, really going to be helpful to you downstream. All right, it's, uh, this is the hard work of playing guitar is learning this stuff. But the fun comes when you can peel it off at higher rates of speed and... Um, and you can improvise and things like that on the fly. So take the time to learn these patterns. They're a high, high payoff, high value investment of your effort. That's the scale of the day.